Hi, Dr. Ron England here from Daytona State College, and I'm going to do a little very short video on GitHub for one programmer. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is that um, GitHub can be a very complex thing to work and learn with multiple people working on projects, with um, remote repositories that are have to synchronize with non-remote repositories, the whole bit. And really, when I'm doing a solo project, I have um, I'd actually work on two different machines, my one at work and my one at home. And the one at work, I have a repo for my projects, which is a local repo, GitHub repo, that I work on. But then I need to push that stuff up to the repository that is actually at GitHub. And then when I go home, I pull it down from that repo, and I do my work, and I push it back up. So this workflow is the most common workflow that I do. Now, I may or may not make a branch of my repo because the reality is in most of the cases, I'm not too terribly worried about messing up my code. I got something that I need to do. I go in and I do it, and then I go ahead and push those changes up. Now, I'm going to do this example inside of Visual Studio, but the same thing applies pretty much to anywhere. So let's say I'm working on my project. I'm actually right here on Visual Studio 2022. It's got Git built in here, and it's got all those commands. But let's say I'm going to go into here, and it doesn't really matter what I do here. I may say that I want to make a, uh, and in this case, I'm just going to go, and I'm going to make a comment somewhere. I'm just looking for a good place to make a comment right here on um, something that I'm doing. Or maybe just simply, I want to remove some excess spaces. So that my code looks a little bit cleaner, I could run tidy on this, and it would probably even do a better job. Bottom line is, I just made some changes to the file. So now that I've made these changes to the file, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save the file. So, um, and actually, I just always just use, I can use save all, but I, I always usually just use Control S to save. Well, I've now made a change, and I've made a change, and I need to do a couple of things here. One is, I'm going to go to Git, and I am going to, um, well, actually, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and commit. So over here, I got my little bit of commit. Um, I haven't made, I mean, only I all I did is remove, remove extraneous, Spaces, not really a whole lot of code changes, but I am going to go ahead and, and I have to write that because you're required that when you do a commit that you actually have a comment. So now I will go ahead and commit those and note that I have committed those locally to the master. Okay, so that is the changes that I have made. I've, I've made changes to my code. I went in to get now, remember, this assumes that I have initialized a GitHub repo and that I have a project that exists in that repo, and I do. In this case, that repo has uh, a master, and I typically do two branches, master and development, especially if it's on a project that I am doing, that I'm only on working on the project. Now remember, I'm working on the project in multiple places, so I do have that. I do need to push that up to um, to GitHub um, Remote. So now I've made a change, I've committed those changes, and uh, I did that on the master. I did not do it in a branch. I didn't need to. So now what I need to do is I need to push those changes up to here. So right here, if I go to my GitHub, I can see that I have, um, th this is the same project, it's sitting right there, I've got a beautiful readme that's right here, and I need to push those changes up to the remote. So, uh, uh, and, and I, I like this because most of the, the um, Git tools that I use, <coughs> Dist, uh, GitHub Desktop, um, I mean these all work the same way, or you could just do this command line, um, I go ahead and push it, it will typically push the stuff in the background so that I can go ahead and do that. But now I got the message that it's successfully done this. And now I can go up to the GitHub repo and I can go ahead and reload. And I now have removed extraneous spaces two minutes ago to the domain code. And now my 
GitHub Online is up to date. Now when I go home, I can, on my home machine, which has the duplicate of this entire thing, I can do a pull request on Windows App Base, do any work that I need to do, and push it back up to here. This is a very simplistic workflow, but it's the workflow that typically works for you if you're working solo and you just need to make simple changes and you want to make sure that your repositories are all up to date. Workflow is simple, change the code, commit the code, push the code. You get to your other computer, you pull the code, and you may make changes, you commit the code, and you push the code. So your repository here stays up to date, and your remote repository stay up to date. No need in many cases to push things to a branch. Branches are for when you want to try stuff and you might break something. But 99.99% .99 of the time, I have no worries about breaking any of my code. No need to make a branch. When I do and I want to try stuff, I do it all in a development branch where I'm actually working. Now, when you're working with multiple people, disregard what I just said. You need to have, especially if you have people that you're not necessarily going to trust because they might break the code. Let them work in a development branch, and then you can go through all the complexities of GitHub. I just wanted to show you a nice, easy workflow that works. That's it. That's all I got for today. I wanted to make this simple so that people that are getting started in GitHub have a nice, easy way to do it. Talk to you later.